ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with al aqid al tahawiya the creed compiled by Imam Abu Ja'far at Tahawi, Rahimahullah. Then <coughs> we reached point number 204. We had some sections on the excellence of the companions, and then with regard to the Salaf and the scholars of this Ummah, and then at Tahawi, Rahimahullah, he says, ولا نفضل أحدا من الأولياء على أحد من الأنبياء عليهم السلام ونقول نبي واحد أفضل من جميع الأولياء And we do not declare any of the awliya the beloved and obedient servants of Allah to be, so, to be superior to any of the prophets and we say a single prophet is superior to all of the awliya just to repeat that and we do not declare any of the awliya the beloved and obedient servants of Allah we do not declare a single one of the awliya to be superior to any of the prophets alayhimussalam and we say a single prophet is superior to all of the awliya. Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah, he said, the author, Rahimahullah, moved on from the ulama, from the scholars, to the awliya. And the term al-awliya is the plural of wali. Awliya is the plural of wali. And this, this matter, al-wilaya, it means al-qurb wal-mahabba. It means closeness and love. So they, the awliya, are the people drawn close to <coughs> and loved by Allah, the mighty and majestic. They, the awliya, who are they? They are the people drawn close to Allah and loved by Allah. And they are called the awliya because of their being drawn close to Allah and because of Allah's loving them. I mean, this is what the term al-wilaya and the term al-wali is what it means. Closeness and love. And he said, he mentioned a couple of ayahs, with regard to Allah's love, and he said, <clears throat> He the Most High said, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawwabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahhirin. The ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah, ayah 222, with the explanation, Allah loves those people who turn in repentance to him. And he loves those who purify themselves. Then he mentions the second ayah with regard to Allah's loving certain people. He said, and he the Most High said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Surah Al-Baqarah, the same surah, ayah 195, with the explanation. Allah loves those who, perf- who perfect their acts of obedience. Those who are people of Ihsan, those who perfect, the, those whose actions are good, those who perfect their acts of obedience to him. Then Shaykh al goes on with regard to the matter of defining who is a wali of Allah, who is a beloved servant of Allah, a wali from the awliya. He said, and Allah has explained who they are 
in his sayings. So Yunus, the 10th surah, ayah 62, is the explanation. The awliya of Allah, the obedient and beloved servants of Allah, the awliya of Allah. There will be no fear upon them, nor will they grieve. They are those who have iman, and they were dutiful to Allah. They had taqwa. They were dutiful to Allah. The Shaykh said, so the wali must have two characteristics combined in him. In other words, taken from this ayah. This ayah mentions the awliya and that they have these two characteristics. Shaykh Baudan said, so the wali must have two characteristics combined in him. The first is al-iman correct faith and the second at taqwa dutifulness to Allah iman and taqwa then he mentioned and the people with regard to al-wilaya being loved or being hated are of three categories in all of the creation will fall with regard to this matter of whether they are from the awliya, the beloved ones of Allah or whether they are ones hated by Allah they will, the people will fall into one of three categories the first category is those who are purely awliya of Allah those people who are purely beloved ones of Allah from the angels and the prophets and the siddiqoon the true and sincere followers of the prophets and the shuhada, the martyrs and the righteous believers that's the first category those are pure, purely beloved ones of Allah and he said the second category are those who are the enemies of Allah those who are total enemies such as the mushrik and the kafir, the unbeliever and the munafiq the hypocrite who is upon major hypocrisy a hypocrisy that takes the person out of Islam so they are enemies to Allah and to his messenger. And Shaykh Al-Fawzan quotes three ayahs. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu la ta'takhidhu adui wa aduwakum awliya atulquna ilayhim bilmawadda wa qad kafaru bima jaakum min al-haq. Surah Al-Mumtahana, the 60th surah, the first ayah. With the explanation, O oh, you who believe, do not take my enemy and your enemy as only uh, as friends and allies showing them love when they have disbelieved in the truth which has come to you and he mentioned a second ayah where he quotes he said and he the most high said لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو أو عشيرتهم سورة المجادلة 58 سورة آية 22 with the explanation you will not find a people who truly believe in Allah and in the last day having love and affection for those who oppose Allah and his messenger even if they are their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their tribe and he quoted the third ayat in this regard 
يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى اولياء بعضهم اولياء بعض ومن يتولهم من ومن يتولهم منكم فانه منهم ان الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين سوره المائده في الفتح سوره ايه 51 with the explanation O oh, you who believe do not take the Jews and Christians as friends and allies they are friends and allies to each other and whoever from you takes them as friends and allies against the believers then he is from them indeed Allah does not guide the wrongdoers That's how a poverty <coughs> that's how a poverty explained the ayah. And whoever takes the Jews and Christians as friends and allies against the believers. Whoever takes his friends and allies, those Jews and Christians waging war against Islam. Whoever takes them as his friends and allies against the believers. Then he is from them. So it's the second category. Those who are pure enemies towards Allah and His Messenger. Then he mentions the third category. He said, those who have wilaya, love and alliance from one aspect and enmity, adawa, from another aspect. And from one aspect, they have wilaya, love and alliance. And from another aspect, they have adawa, enmity. And he explains who that is. He said, and it is the sinful Muslim al-Muslim and Afi, the sinful Muslim. So he has wilaya, love and alliance. There is for him love and alliance in accordance with his degree of obedience. And there is for him enmity in accordance with the level of the sins that he has. It will vary. So the more obedience to Allah that he has, the more wilaya there will be for him, more love and alliance there will be for him. And on the other hand, the more sin that he has, then the greater will be his, the aspect of enmity towards him. Then Shaykh al said, so every Muslim is a wali of Allah. Every Muslim is wali of Allah. A beloved servant of Allah. However, in accordance with his level of iman, this will vary. How much of a wali, his degree of being wali, a beloved servant of Allah, will vary in accordance with his level of iman. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan moved on and says, and whoever claims to be a wali, a beloved servant of Allah, or has wilaya claimed for him, but somebody else, and he does not have iman, and he does not have taqwa, due to the of Allah, avoiding any sins against Allah, he doesn't have that. Then he is a dajjal, he is a kazdab. He is a great trickster, great dajjal, and he is a great kazdab, he is a great liar. He claims to be a wali of Allah, but of a servant of Allah, or he has somebody else claim it for him, and he doesn't have these two things. He doesn't have iman, and he doesn't have taqwa. Then he's a great dajjal, he's a dajjal, and a great liar. Shaykh Fawzan then said, and some people claim to have wilaya, Allah. They have claim to have this condition of being a wali being a beloved servant of Allah <coughs> when they are actually sorcerers, people of sihr, sorcery and they are fortune tellers and they are magicians who do tricks and they are astrologers <laughs> and Shaykh al-Islam, meaning Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah he wrote a book which he called Al-Furqan Bayna awliya al-Rahman wa awliya al-Shaytan 
Dr. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wrote a book in this regard, how to distinguish between these two categories, those who are truly beloved servants of Allah, truly awliya of Allah, and those who are false claimants to it. And he called the book Al-Furqan, the criterion between the beloved servants of the most merciful and the allies of Satan. And he made clear in it those who falsely claim will I. Falsely claim that they are out here. Those who from those who promote amongst the people things which they think to be miracles which are granted to a wali. Things which they promote which are which they think are karamat miracles given to a wali when they are in reality phenomena brought about by devils. And an explanation of that will follow in the next point, point number 205. It makes the point that there are some people, they claim that they can do these certain miracles, and these are miracles granted to Allah's beloved servant, servants. These are karamat. And in reality, they are just tricks produced by devils, shayateen. And he said, so it is obligatory to love the awliya of Allah. It is obligatory to have love for the beloved servants of Allah and to take them as an example to follow and to ally yourself to them and to be close to them. In the true the true awliya of Allah, the true beloved servants of Allah. He said, and his saying وَلَا نُفَضِّلُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ عليهم السلام saying of the author at Tahawi Rahimahullah and we do not prefer anyone from the awliya over a single one from the prophets alayhim salam Sheikh Fawzan said this is a refutation of the Sufis so they go beyond the due limits with regard to the awliya the Sufis go beyond the bounds, go beyond the due limits with regard to the awliya. And in their opinion, they are better than the Prophets. That's the opinion of the Sufis, that the awliya are better even than the Prophets. Whereas the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah do not go beyond the limits with regard to the awliya. Rather, they give them their due status. And as for the misguided Sufis, then they declare them to be more excellent than the Prophets. To the extent that one of them says, and he gives a quote from one of these deviant Sufis, he said, that he said, مَقَامُ النُّبُوَّةِ فِي مَنْزِلٍ فَوَيْقَ الرَّسُولِ وَذُونَ الْوَلِي That one of them said, the position of prophethood is in a level slightly above messengership but below the wali. This is what one of these Sufis said. They claim the lowest level is risala, the messengership. Then slightly above messengership is prophethood, nubuwa. Even that, that was of course the wrong way around. The slightly above prophethood is messengership. And then above that is wilaya, the position of the awliya as they claim. Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, وَهَذَا كُفْرٌ And this is unbelief because the most excellent are the Rusul, the messengers and then the Anbiya, then the Prophets and then the Awliya and the reason why the Sufis give precedence to the Wali over the Prophet is that they claim that the wali takes directly from Allah whereas a prophet takes to an intermediary this is the evil claim of the Sufis they say the prophets they take from Allah through an intermediary there's someone in between meaning Jibreel alayhi salam 
they don't take directly from Allah, they take from Jibreel who took from Allah. Whereas they claim that they were the awliya, they say the wali, he takes directly from Allah. So therefore the wali, in their evil claim, they say is better than a prophet. Shaykh Fawzan said, so he's saying, when aqulu nabiyun wahid afdalu min jami'il awliya, and he's saying, and we say, a single prophet is more excellent than all of the awliya, all of the awliya put together. Sheikh al said, this is something which there is no doubt about. So all of the awliya, all of the beloved servants of Allah, from the beginning of the creation to the end, will not equal a single prophet, a single nabi. And this is the aqidah, the creed and belief of the Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah. That's where Shaykh al Bawzan ends this point, Hafidullah. Then just something that Shaykh al Albani, Rahimahullah, he brings in his notes. As he said, He said concerning this point, he said in the explanation, meaning Ibn Abdul Iz said, the Sheikh, meaning the author at Bahawi, Rahimahullah, he is indicating a refutation of the Ittihadiyya, those who say that the Creator and the creation are one and the same. With this point, he is refuting them. And the ignorant Sufis. And however, the people who are upon the correct way, they counsel following the knowledge and following the legislation. I mean, what's, what's been refuted here is the saying of the Sufis, those who put the awliya above the level of prophethood. And as for the people of truth, then in this regard, they counsel following the knowledge and following the Islamic legislation. Because Allah has made it obligatory upon all of the creation that they should follow the Messenger. He, the Most High, said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Surah Al-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 64, with the explanation. And we did not send any Messenger except that he should be obeyed by the commission of Allah. And Shaykh al Albani continued, he said, and many of those people, I mean those people of Ittihad, people who say the creation and creation are one and the same, and the extreme ignorant Sufis, he said many of them think that he himself has reached through his leadership and through his striving upon worship and through his purifying himself, he thinks that he has reached a level that the prophets reached <coughs> without following their way. It's what many of these extreme Sufis think. I think the person strives himself upon various acts of, of worship or purification that he can eventually, he can reach the level that the prophets were upon. But, but not even following their way. He said, and some of them think that he has become better than the prophets. And some of them think, some of them say that they take knowledge directly from Allah, from the lamp of the seal of the awliya. And they claim for themselves that they are, of course he's talking about the heads of the, some of the heads of the Sufis of the past. And they claim for themselves that, he, that they are Khatimul Anbiya, the seal of the awliya, the seal of the beloved servants of Allah. This is what they, they call themselves. And then this knowledge, this knowledge which they claim to be taken directly from Allah, is actually the saying of Fir'aun, which is that the visible universe is something self-existing. And that it does not have a creator who is apart from it. 
So the only difference, I mean, the only difference between their saying, this is saying the extreme Sufi is like Ibn Arabi. That's what they say. That the creation and the creator are the one and the same thing. There's no creator outside this universe. But Shaykh al Bani said, Ashamullah, the only difference between these two sayings, between the saying of this person and between the saying of the Pharaoh, Fir'aun, is now this one, meaning the extreme Sufi, he says, it is Allah. This creation that you see is Allah. Whereas Fir'aun outwardly denied this totally. However, inwardly, Fir'aun knew better about Allah than them because he affirmed a creator. Fir'aun, in his inward heart, in his heart of hearts, he knew that there was a creator. Whereas they think that this created universe is itself the existing creator, such as Ibn Arabi and his like. And then when he saw that there is no way to alter the clear legislation, he therefore said, prophethood has been sealed. However, wilaya has not been sealed. And he claimed with regard to wilaya that which is greater than prophethood. and that which is greater than what the prophets and messengers had. And he claimed that the prophets took benefit from this, from the wilaya. And Sheikh al mentioned the same thing that Sheikh al quoted. That he said, the position of prophethood in the Barazakh is slightly above the messenger, but it is less than being a wali. You know, the highest level of all is being holy. That's above prophethood, above messengership, with everything. Shaykh Rabbani said, Shaykh Rabbani finished, Rahimullah by saying, so this is turning the Islamic legislation upside down. Because wilaya is something confirmed for the people of Iman and the people who have taqwa. Just as he, the Most High, said, Allah inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. الذين آمنوا وكانوا يأتقون. So Yunus, the same story we had before, by 62 to 63. Meaning, wilaya is not some special thing which a person can get hold, can, can obtain by abandoning the Islamic legislation. Rather, it's something that people, as the Sheikh said, with the condition that the person has these two characteristics, and he will be a wali of Allah. He has iman, and he is dutiful to Allah. Then Sheikh Albani finished by saying. And prophethood is more special and particular than wilaya. And messengership is more special and particular, more special and particular than prophethood, as has preceded. And with regard to the next point, point number 205, the Nafahawi, rahimahullah, he said, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِمَا جَاءَ مِنْ كَرَامَاتِهِمْ وَصَحَّ عَنِ اسْتِقَاتِ مِنْ رِوَايَاتِهِمْ and we believe in what is reported from their miracles and in the narrations about them which are authentically related by the reliable narrators. Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, this is a tremendous subject and it is the subject of Al-Karamat, literally miracles. Al-Karamat, miracles. So, a karama is an event which is extraordinary, an extraordinary event, something which breaks what normally happens. So, if this happens upon the hand of a prophet, in something extraordinary, above and beyond what normally happens in creation, if it happens upon the hand of a prophet, it is called a mu'jiza, a miraculous sign, a mu'jiza like the miraculous sign of the Qur'an. And this word, mu'jizah, then in its origin it means obviously a miracle, something wonderful, and it also means something which renders a person incapable, which renders somebody else incapable of something. That's why Shaykh al follows it and says like the miracle, the mu'jizah of the Qur'an. 
So mankind and jinn are incapable of bringing its like. The Quran is miraculous because it renders jinn and, man and mankind incapable of bringing its like. He said, and it is the greatest of mu'jizat, it's the greatest of miracles, the Quran. And he gives another example, he said, another, another mu'jizah, another miracle which came to a prophet. He said, and like the miracle of the rod of Musa and the nine signs, the nine signs, and like Isa ibn Maryam giving life to the dead. Isa ibn Maryam, by Allah's permission, bringing the dead to life. So, that's the first point that Sheikh al Fawzan makes here. If a miracle, a miracle it happens at the hand of a prophet, then it is called mu'jiza. Oh. Then he said. And if an extraordinary event happens at the hand of a righteous man, then it is karama. It's called a karama. Something given as a favor. A miracle given as a favor by Allah. Something which he causes to occur upon that person's hand. It is not from that person himself. It's a very important point you need to remember. If a miracle happens at the hand of a righteous man, the miracle is not from that righteous man. It's something from Allah that Allah causes to happen at his hand. And he gives an example, he said, just as happened with the companions of the cave, Ashab al the, the, the companions of the cave who were mentioned in the 18th surah of the Quran, Surah Al-Kahf, the 18th surah. And that was a karama, a miraculous event given to some righteous people. He said, and such as happened with Maryam, and he quotes the ayah, كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا سورة آل إمران the third سورة آية 37 with the explanation whenever زكريا entered upon her whenever زكريا entered upon مريم in her private prayer room he found with her provision Sheikh Al-Fawzan said so whenever he came to her, or he said, he said rather, her provision came to her whilst she was worshipping Allah and she did not go out from the private room. She stayed in the private room and didn't leave. And Allah sent to her provision. And here's a further example, he, or he mentions, he said, and just as happened with regard to the karamat, the miracles granted to this Ummah, to this nation. And Shaykh al-Islam, in Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions a number of them in his book, Al-Furqan. And then he mentions the third category. So a miraculous, an event that appears miraculous, if it happens at the hand of a prophet, it's called a mu'jiza. If it happens at the hand of a righteous man, it's called karama. And he mentioned the third category of when it, where it can happen. Some miraculous looking event, he said. And as for something extraordinary occurring at the hands of fortune tellers or sorcerers, then this is a phenomenon brought about by devils, which occurs at his hand as a test and a trial. So he may fly in the air or he may walk upon water and do actions which are extraordinary. And these are actions of the devils. And just because if we, see, if we saw that happen, we saw a man flying in the air or we saw a man walking upon water, that wouldn't mean that this is a righteous man at all. So it can be from this third category here. That is just action of the devils, help the devils helping this evil doer, make it look like a miracle. So Sheikh al Fawzan then, he mentions the principle to distinguish between these three, he said. And the principle is that we look 
at the person's actions, his deeds. So if his deeds conform to Islam, then that which happens at his hands is a karama, something granted as a favor from Allah, a miracle granted to a righteous man from Allah. And if not, then it is just a case of a devil serving him. A devil doing some service. I mean, if it's a person who is not a person of Iman, not a person who is dutiful to Allah, not upon the Islamic legislation, then whatever miracles happen from him, it's just devils helping him, serving him. And then Sheikh al Qawzan quotes a number of ayahs. He said, He the Most High said, وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا يَا مَعَشَرَ الْجِنِّ قَدْ اسْتَكْثَرْتُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ وَقَالَ وَقَالَ أَوْلِيَاؤُهُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ رَبَّنَا اسْتَمْتَعَ بَعْضُنَا بِبَعْضٍ Surah Al-An'am, the sixth surah, ayah 128, with the explanation. And on the day when he, Allah, will gather them all together, he will say to the jinn, you have misled many from mankind. And their allies from mankind will say, O oh, our Lord, we made use of each other. In man, mankind, the mis- misguided mankind made use of the jinns, and the jinns made use of the man- misguided people. Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, Surah Al-An'am, 6th Surah, 128. Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, So the jinni made use of the human by his humbly submitting to him and by his obeying him. And the jinn took benefit, made use of the person by getting the person to humbly submit to him and to obey him. And the human made use of the jinn since he, the jinn, served him and brought him that which he wanted. That's how they benefited each other. Then he quotes the second ayah. He, the Most High, said, in the continuation of this ayah, قَالَ النَّارُ مَثْوَاكُمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّي بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Surah Al-An'am, same surah, 6th surah, ayah 128 to 129. Continuation with the explanation. He will say, Allah will say, the fire is your dwelling place. You will remain in it forever. Except, illa nasha Allah, except as Allah wishes. And this phrase in the ayah, except as Allah wishes, then in Mufassir, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, he said, meaning, from the time when they are resurrected until the time when they enter the fire. And the unbelievers, from mankind and jinn, will be in the fire forever, except as Allah wishes, a public said meaning this period, from when they are resurrected from their graves until they enter into the fire. That period there is the exception mentioned. Illallah Nasha Allah, except as Allah wishes. Apart from that, they'll be in the fire after that, they'll be in the fire forever. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ Indeed, your Lord is all-wise, all-knowing. And likewise, we place some wrongdoers in charge of others because of the sins they committed. Sheikh Fawzan said, So these are happenings brought about by devils. Miraculous events that happen upon people who do not have Iman, who do not have Taqwa, people are not upon the Islamic legislation, the miracles are seen from them. Sheikh said, these are happenings brought about by devils. So the difference between them and between a karama, a miracle of a righteous person, is Iman and righteous action. Iman and righteous action, that's the difference. This is the position of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. In this person, the believer, is upon Iman and upon Taqwa, upon righteous action. That one who is a devil is not upon Iman, 
multiple and righteous action, then that is not a karama. But he, any miracle that he shows is just a devilish event. Then Shaykh al-Fawadan said, Hafizullah, and as for other people, I mean, besides the Ahlul Sunnah al-Jama'ah, as for others besides them, then because of faulty understanding of extraordinary happenings, they fall into many errors. So the Mu'tazila and those who follow their way from the Aqlaniyin, from the rationalists, to this day of ours, they deny Al-Karamat, they deny miracles to the extent that those extreme ones of theirs deny some of the mu'jizat. In Mu'tazila, and those who take their way, they deny karama, they deny miracles granted to righteous people. They deny them. And the extreme ones from amongst them, they deny even some of the mu'jizat, even some of the miracles of the prophets. And they say, this is not affirmed by the aql. It's not something affirmed by the intellect because they give precedence to their intellect. That's the first group of people who go, go astray with regard to miracles, karamat. Miracles granted to righteous people mean the aqlaniyun, people of Russian, the rationalists and muqtazila. They deny them. Then he said, and the second category, the second category of those who go astray in this regard, he said, are the Quburiyun, the grave worshippers, and the Sufis. They go beyond limits in affirming the miracles, the Karamat, to the extent that, that they affirm them for allies of the devil. So they affirm miracles for people who do not pray and do not fast, as long as something extraordinary happens when these are actually events brought about by devils. And some of them go, go beyond the limits to such an extent with regard to a righteous and beloved servant of Allah that they take him as an object of worship along with Allah, as happened to the grave worshippers. So if you were to read the book of a sha'rani called Tabaqatul Awliya, you will see very astonishing things and baseless reports. So the Wali, in their view, has left behind being bound by Islamic beauties and he does not need to worship. And this is the view of the extreme Sufis. They say once a person has become a Wali, a special status they've invented, this status in their belief of Wali, which is above Prophet and Messengership, they say when a people when a person reaches that, he has no longer any Islamic obligations upon him and has no need to worship at all. Sheikh Fawzan said, and I mentioned what the true reality in this regard is, he said, but a person, no matter what level of righteousness he reaches and what level of worship, he will not exit from Ubudiyya. He will never exit from servitude to Allah and worship. Not the angels, not the awliya, and not the prophets. To the extent that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wallahi inni la arju an akuna a'lamakum billahi wa atqakum. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, By Allah I hope that I will indeed be the one from amongst you who has the most knowledge of Allah and is most fearful and dutiful to him. I mentioned, as I mentioned in the footnote reported by Al-Bukhari as Hadith 5063 and by Muslim. And it's from a Hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu. Shaykh Baudan said, and he, he is the chief of all mankind and the best of those who walked upon the earth. <coughs> And Allah said to him, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Surah Al-Hijr, the 15th Surah, I-99. And addressed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the meaning, And worship your Lord until the yaqeen, 
until the certainty of death comes to you. And the best of all mankind was told to worship Allah until death came to him. And just as a side point with regard to, because some of the Sufis twist this, the meaning of this ayah, and they say, I mean, until a level of certainty comes to you, and our awliya, they reach this level of certainty while they're still alive. So with regard to the phrase al yaqeen then the Salaf mentioned this word al yaqeen here means death. It means until death comes to you. This was mentioned by Mujahid, and Qatada, and Al-Hasan al-Basri, and others from the Salaf, mentioned by Ibn Jira Tabari, and others, that it means al maut he means death. Sheikh Fawzan said, so no one reached that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached and he did not exit from worshipping Allah and not even the Masih, not even Isa ibn Maryam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for Allah the mighty and majestic said with regard to him لَنْ يَسْتَنْكِفَ الْمَسِيحُ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدًا لِلَّهِ وَلَا الْمَلَائِكَةُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ وَمَنْ يَسْتَنْكِفْ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ وَيَسْتَكْبِرْ فَسَيَحْشُرُهُمْ إِلَيْهِ جَمِيعًا فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَيُوَثِّيهِمْ أُجُورَهُمْ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ اسْتَنْكَفُوا وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ اسْتَنْكَفُوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا فَيُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا وَلَا يَجِدُونَ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا So to Nisa, the fourth surah, ayahs 172 and 173. With the explanation, the Masih, Isa ibn Maryam, did not disdain to be a slave to Allah. He didn't refuse with pride to be a slave to Allah, nor did the angels draw close. And whoever disdains to worship him and is too proud, then Allah will resurrect them, all of them, to him. And as for those who truly believe and work righteous deeds, then he will give them fully the reward of their deeds, and he will increase them from his favor. And as for those who disdain and are too proud, then he will punish them with a painful punishment. And there will be no ally or aider in the times of ignorance and false superstitions. just very, very quickly finally then Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah he added the point here the author has done well in restricting that where the author said and we believe in the miracles that are authentically reported Sheikh al-Albani said <coughs> the author did well in restricting, to the, in restricting that to those reports which are authentic because the people, and in particular the later peoples, have exceeded what is proper in narrating things about miracles to such an extent that they narrate in their name, they narrate in the name of the righteous people, false and futile things, which are such that no one with an atom's weight of intellect will doubt that they are false and futile. Indeed, sometimes they even report things which are major shirk, you know, they report things that claim to be miracles, which are major shirk. And with regard to lordship, and the book, Tabaqat, al- Tabaqat al-Awliya, the same book Sheikh al mentioned, Tabaqat al-Awliya of al-Sha'arani, is one of the books which mentions the most number of these false and futile reports, <coughs> which contain the saying, the like of the saying, of one awliya, they claim, that he said, for 20 years, I have left off my saying, kun fayakun. And for 20 years I've stopped myself from saying, exist, so that things would exist. I've stopped myself from saying that, out of good manners towards Allah. I ex- highly exalted is Allah above what the oppressors say. There's some evildoer here. He's claiming lordship for himself. He's claiming if he says kun to something, he wants something to exist. He himself just says exist and it exists. 
He said, but for 20 years I stopped myself from that. Just out of good manners towards Allah. Shaykh Al-Rani, Rahimullah, finished by saying, and we find a good number of authentic miracles from, the ta- from some of the companions, and we find them in the book, Riyadh al-Salihin, of an chapter 253, hadith number 1516 to 1523. There's enough authentic reports in that regard. Alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu ala muhammad. Any points of clarification? There's a report like that, whether it's authentic or not, I can't remember. I'll try and check, but by next time I'll try and check in. Whether it's authentic or whether it's a hadith, whether it's not a hadith, or Allah Allah Allah. In, in the meantime, if anyone's thinking of any clarifications needed, just in the meantime, then, by the, the favor of Allah and His mercy, we have entered the month of Muharram, the first month of the year. Then, I'll just mention a couple of, or mention three narrations with regard to the virtue of fasting in this month of Muharram, especially fasting on the tenth day of this month. Day, the 10th of Muharram, the day of Ashura, which seems, uh, coincides with this Thursday, inshallah, this Thursday being the 10th of Muhar- Muharram. <coughs> and in that, ga- in that regard, there are a number of narrations from them, is from Abu Qatada, radiallahu anhu, who said, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was asked about fasting on the day of Arafah the ninth day of the last month, al Hijjah. So he said, يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَاضِيَةَ وَالْبَاقِيَةَ It wipes away the sins of the previous and the remaining year. And he was asked about fasting the day of Ashura, the tenth of this month, which coincides with Thursday, inshallah. He was asked about fasting the day of Ashura. So he said, يُكَفِّرُ السَّنَةَ الْمَاضِيَةَ It wipes away the sins of the previous year. A hadith reported by Muslim. And likewise, from Abu, Abu Ghattafan ibn Tarif al-Murri, rahimahullah, that he said, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, was asked, or he said, I heard Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, saying, when Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted the day of Ashura that he fasted the day of Ashura and he commanded the people to fast it then they said, O Messenger of Allah it is a day which is honored by the Jews and Christians so Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said فَإِذَا كَانَ الْعَامُ الْمُقْبِلْ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ الْيَوْمَ التَّاسِعُ he said then, when it is next year, if Allah wishes, we will fast the ninth. He said, but he did not reach the next year. He died, sallallahu alayhi wa before the next year. Until, as he actually said, until Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa he died. So as the people of knowledge, like Shaykh bin Baz, rahimahullah, and others mention, then it is from the Sunnah and it's recommended that if you fast the day of the tenth day, that is recommended and it's desirable. It's not binding, but it's recommended. If you fast the tenth, then that you fast the day the ninth along with the day before it, along with me Wednesday and Thursday. It's better, it's better you do it that way. And uh, a third hadith. And from Abu Wa'an Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, afdal al-siyam ba'da Ramadan 
شهر الله المحرم وأفضل الصلاة بعد بعد الفريضة صلاة صلاة الليل. And from Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه who said, Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the most excellent fasting after Ramadan is Allah's month of Muharram. And the most excellent prayer after the obligatory prayer is prayer during the night. The night prayer during the night. Hadith reported by Muslim. All of these three hadith have been reported by Muslim. So this hadith, as Sheikh al points out, uh, Hussein al Aisha in his book, al Nasu al Fiqhiyah, he mentioned some questions that were put to Sheikh al and Sheikh al rahimahullah, he mentioned this, how it's recommended to fast throughout this month. Throughout this month here. Yeah, whoever, <coughs> the phrase, the phrase that the brother wants repeating was that whoever claims to be a wali, all he has it claimed for him, somebody else claimed for him, he some followers or the like, claiming for him that he is a wali and he does not have iman and he does not have taqwa فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ دَجَّابٌ وَكَذَّابٌ then he is a great, he is a, he is a dajjal and a kazzab, a great liar yeah. As Sheikh Al-Fawzan, as later on he mentioned, the like of these people who don't, they don't fast, they don't pray, they don't follow Islamic regulations, they say we're not bound by the Islamic Sharia, we've left the Islamic Sharia, we don't need to follow it anymore, we've reached a level of certainty that we don't need to follow Islamic regulations, that, that's just for common people. Then they claim, they, they, they have their leader and they claim that he is a wali. And whatever devilish things he does, even acts totally contrary to Islam, they claim they use the miracles. Oh. And when you criticize, if, you, if someone criticizes it, they say you can't criticize it. He's a wali. And these are acts. These are miracles of the wali. With regard to oh, the, the lack of this ayah, I dealt with it by the people of knowledge, but one thing that people of knowledge point out is that the fact that the kuffar, the Jews and the Christians and the rest of the kuffar, that they are, en- they are enemies, they have enmity, then that doesn't negate the fact that the way that we treat them if there are people are openly, fight, openly fighting against Islam, waging war against Islam, then of course that's, that's one thing. But if they are not waging war against Islam, then that we, we treat them with justice and fairness. We treat them with justice and we treat them with fairness. And the fact that we treat them with justice and fairness, it doesn't mean that we have love for them. No, rather we have hatred for, for them, for their being enemies towards, towards Allah. But we treat them with justice and we treat them with fairness. And so the fact that we treat them with justice and fairness doesn't mean that we, that we love them. And the fact that we have hatred towards them, it doesn't mean that we oppress them, we, t- we take their rights, we shed their blood, we steal their property. No, that's not the case, as the people knowledge point out. Right. The nine signs which were given to Musa, the signs that he brought to, to Fir'aun, uh, his, his, his staff and the white hand and the locusts and the frogs and the blood and the, all the nine signs which Musa came with as a proof of Fir'aun. 
of Kinsale Island, the locusts and etc. Plague of locusts and so on. The scholars answer these questions. These are questions put to people knowledge, inshallah. Put to people knowledge. There's no proof for the khwarij in the eyes of the, of the Quran. All the eyes of the Quran are against the khwarij. Eyes in the hadith against the khwarij. So as probably mentioned in the ayah, he mentioned what it meant. Taken as friends and protectors. Those who are waging war against Islam, that there are unbelievers waging war against Islam, that if the believers, if amongst the believers are those who take them as friends and allies and ally themselves against the believers, then they are like them. They are not after people knowledge. Oh, no.